All right, so previously we covered the legends and the data sorting options. In this video, we're gonna be going through the why value access customization. So as always, within the sample report, you already have a pre-built example that you can play around with. But in our case, we're gonna be going into the training view and actually building the chart from scratch. So first things first, let's add an instance of the waterfall visual, resize it and disable the background plus the title. Now for the chart setup itself, I'm gonna be using year from the hierarchy and the changes, I'm gonna place the difference. There we go. Now going into the formatting options, you can see Y axis is enabled by default. Once you open that up, you can see additional formatting options for the Y axis. The first thing that you can change here is gonna be the side or the placement of the axis. So you can position it either on the left or the right hand side, depending on however you want it. Now going forward, you can also play around a little bit more with the fonts. You can adjust the color, family, style, and also the size of the values within the Y axis. Next is gonna be title customization. So if necessary, you can also create or write a title for that Y axis, and you can also further customizing by adjusting the font styling options, colors, sizes, styles, and families. Now going forward, next one is gonna be zero line. So for the zero line, we actually have three options. We have visible, which means that you're always gonna have a zero line visible within the chart. Then the next one is center, so you physically place the value axis in the center of the chart. And the third option is gonna be floating. Now floating is gonna be really useful for those cases where you start with something else than just a zero. So for example, if your starting value like goes into millions or something like that, make sure you readjust the Y axis because that's also gonna adjust the scaling model. Now for our case, we're gonna go back to visible. The next is a log scale, so you can enable or disable it. Next one is force top and bottom values. Now this is gonna be useful for those cases where you physically wanna force the highest value to be visible and to showcase it on the value axis. Next one is the axis size, which allows you to define how far away from the side does the axis actually start. So for example, if I change this instead of zero to 100, you can see it forces to move further to the right hand side. Now going back to the zero, so that's as basic as it could be, there we go we have our type for the value axis. In this case, I'm using numerical values. And that's why numeric is gonna be perfect for that. For other cases where you're actually using percentages, make sure to adjust the value type for the axis because that's something you have to do manually. Now, next one is gonna be display units and value decimals. Display units allow you to create a shortening for the value. So for example, right now you can see that everything is in the thousands. If I would want to, I can also force it to have no aggregation. So this is completely up to you. Just make sure that it's fully understandable to our end user. Next one is value decimals. Similar approach, you can define how many decimals you wanna have within the visual without touching the original column of the value. After that, we have our value affixes. Once you enable value affixes, you have two additional fields appearing. You have prefix and suffix. This is gonna allow you to create some additional measurements where, for example, explain the unit of the value. So you can go for something like square meters or something like that, as long as it's relevant to the use case. If you don't need them, just simply disable the affixes and keep moving forward. Next setting is scale adjustment tolerance. The scale adjustment tolerance allows you to define how much white space do you leave at the top from the chart. So for example, right here, you can see that the top value goes to something like 325,000, something around that. If we adjust the scale adjustment tolerance, we can eliminate the 400, but we're gonna force the value axis to actually go a bit higher. So this is something you can manually adjust based on your preferences. Now, scale minimum step allows you to define how much is gonna be the value for the singular steps on the Y axis. If you need to, you can also enable custom value ranges. So you can physically force the chart not to go over a certain value or below a certain value. If not, disable and keep moving on. Tick colors are gonna be controlling these little ticks right here next to the value. And afterwards, you also have your grid lines. So you can enable or disable them based on your preferences. If you wanna make something a little bit more interesting, you can also start to play around with the colors and the styles for the grid lines. All right. That's going to be it for the Y axis customization and I'll see you in the next video.